So, all right, I uh, will share this again later. I bet you I didn't uh, share it. You guys are probably going to need to. I'm not going to share the document yet then. Well, we'll throw it in here and see what happens because um, I don't think I put it in the right place. So it's probably not shared out publicly yet. If all of a sudden I start to see a whole bunch of pop-ups, I'll, I'll move it over. But essentially what we're going to look at is something called Google Takeout. Google Takeout is a tool that's built inside of Google. Uh, Mike Auger, our systems analyst, is here kind of to tell us some of the security issues that, that potentially we see with this and how to gain access to it. Um, but it's a tool that is built for the sole purpose of either transferring your material to another account or downloading your material to another account. Okay, thanks, Kelly. I am going to, in that case, uh, take a quick second here and move it um, while, while I'm talking. I'll try and talk and, and type at the same time. So, so essentially, yeah, what we're going to do, we're going to look at the two different tools. There are two tools with inside Google Takeout. One of them is uh, a direct transfer. So if you have another Google account, it's gonna allow you to transfer uh, all of the files from one account, from your account within Palliser, uh, to another account, another Google account. Um, now, this is great because it doesn't, you essentially don't have to do anything. There are still copies in one, uh, that will be available in the other. So it makes copies of all of your files. I'm trying to get you guys access right away here. Let's drop it in here and then we should be good to go. There we go, done. If you refresh, you should have access to those uh, that file now. So, so it's gonna transfer it over. It's gonna take all of the files that you want transferred. It's gonna make a copy of them in your new account. So they will still be stored in your Palliser account, but they will also be a copy in your new account. They are not linked. It is not a sharing or anything, it is a copy. So if you make changes to one, they will not be reflected in another. So that's one method. That is limited to drive and um, mail documents. The other method, when we look at the, the true on takeout, that goes all the way down. So you can dig down as far as you want and, uh, and essentially take out anything but you have to download it. It doesn't just uh, it doesn't just transfer it over for you. So, so here we go. I am going to set up and share my screen. I actually have two. Uh, we'll just wait here. Perfect. I have two fictitious accounts logged in. I have this one, which is our virtual teacher account, and then I have this one over here that's going to be my transfer account. You guys, if you watch, one is uh, one is in a white, uh, and one is in an incognito window. Uh, or one is a, uh, a V, an orange V, and a purple V. So what we're going to do is go to takeout.google.com slash transfer. It's important that you include the slash transfer. Otherwise, it will take you to the tool where you need to download all of this stuff. So you just need to jump back into that account to make sure it's there. Perfect. This one already sent me a, uh, a code. Um, over here to my virtual student account. I was in here before and essentially you enter in a email account that you want that email sent to. Now I'm going to pop over to this guy and I actually I think I deleted that email. I wonder if we can resend it. We'll just move this out of the trash. You can actually resend it. It's actually at the bottom of that little box right there. Yeah, but I think that that's just the code that comes up. Oh, no, it did send another one here. You're right. So, yeah, it did send another one. So in the account that you're transferring to, you will get an email that says, this account wants to transfer files to you. Uh, you should be logged in with both of them, I will say this at the same time. Do this all at the same time. Have both your accounts available. Uh, one could be in your primary window. Another one can be in an incognito window. You can do that without having to worry about, you know, getting the wires crossed. Um, but it's going to send you that code and it's good for 24 hours. So you can't do it once. Go home, grab it, kind of have a cup of coffee and stuff like that and get to it the next day. You will want to do it as quickly as possible. We're going to get that confirmation code and it is going to give it to us right here. 
Now we're gonna jump back to our Palliser account. This is the account that we're transferring from. So it says, you know, we sent a code, check that code, get it, and now we're gonna enter here. So essentially, you should have control of all different steps. It's sending one to your other email to say, are you sure you wanna do this? Then it's asking you for that code from that email to enter it back in. So essentially, you are holding on to all the cards here and it shouldn't be hackable. We're gonna verify that. And it's gonna say, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go from virtual teacher to virtual student. And what do we want to move? Do we wanna move over your drive? This allows you to move any files that you are owner of or have access to in that way that you can make a copy of or something like that. Anything that is prevented, that you are prevented from making a copy of or you don't have ownership of, it will not transfer those over. Likewise with your mail, it's gonna grab all your mails. It's gonna take all those guys. And essentially what we're gonna do at this point is we're gonna start the transfer. Now I have very little to transfer here. Oh no. Ask for a password confirmation. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, oh. that's on your account. That's mine, so that's why I didn't like that. So, <laughs> um, it, uh, so I wonder, We'll have to go back here and see. I bet you because I, I am signed in with multiple accounts, so that's why it's not doing that. Yeah. But you can essentially actually, what it, oh, go ahead, Mike. No, you can actually still do it. If, when you get to that stage, just hit the drop down and hit, hit uh, virtual teacher instead of your account. Like, oh, it yeah. does allow me right here. Okay, perfect. Yeah. And then we just jump into our virtual teacher. We drop that in there and there we go, perfect. And now we're set. It's gonna start transferring over. It says it may take up to about five days or sometimes more depending on how much stuff. We don't have a lot of stuff in here, so we'll just wait for a bit. Mike's gonna to talk to you really quickly here and then we'll come back and we'll see if all of this stuff transferred through. So I'm gonna turn it over to Mike. Mike's gonna talk about the security and why, how to get access to it, so. Okay. Um one quick note on how fast it takes. Like Jason said, it actually depends on how much you have in there. From experience on transferring other people, uh, five gigs of stuff takes about two days. So if you're an email hoarder or you have a lot in your drive, it takes a long time. If you have non-native Google documentation, so let's say you have a lot of like Word documents, Excel documents, uh, different pictures that aren't Google format from their photos and stuff, those take even longer. Uh, anything that's actually native to Google is fairly quick. Um, everything else does take longer. Uh, now for the security aspect, we actually have this turned off by default for everybody. Main reason being is we've actually had a few teachers get hacked. And the first thing that happened is that the individual that hacked their account went in and actually started transferring all their information out to a bogus account. Uh, student file, student ID, everything, which creates four fish, FOIP issues. So because of that, we've actually turned it off by default. So all you have to do is either um, preferably shoot me a uh, service request uh, through the process that we have right now, and I'll be able to turn that service on. And uh, once it's on, we give we usually give about a week window for you to be able to transfer your information. Uh, same thing with students. Usually around this time of year, I'll start getting emails from a lot of the grade 12 high schools, uh, teachers or the librarian, depending on who takes care of all this stuff, saying, yeah, the kids are getting ready if they want to, to transfer their accounts. Uh, I then turn it on for them in that specific OU. They have a week to go. Once that week is over, I turn it off, never fails. Usually three weeks after that, I'll get a couple of requests coming in saying that the student X forgot to do it, so I'll turn it back on for them. Um, we don't leave it on again for the security reason, uh, mainly being, I mean, you guys have a lot of student information in your drives, depending on how well you, or how often you use it. And uh, yeah, if that gets breached, which we've had in the past, that creates a FOIP issue every single time. So. That's the security aspect. Cool, thanks Mike. Uh, any, any questions, does anybody have any questions for Mike with regards to that? Can you leave, uh, can you, uh, you know, start your transfer and then leave it for the weekend? Like if your computer goes to sleep while it's running oh. in the background? Yeah, actually you can shut down your computer and it's fine because once you start it, it's actually handled on Google side. So all you have to do is initiate the start 
and then you can actually turn off your computer. You can go on holidays, whatever you want. Once it's done, you'll actually get a notification saying the transfer has been completed. Can you access your Google account while the transfer is happening? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it might look a little weird when you go into your drive because you'll start. Um, I don't know if it's there already, Jason, but if you go into the one that you transferred it to, you should actually see a folder that's named the original email address. Yep. And, yep. Yeah. It's here. Yeah. So yep. once you I'll see that, you. yeah. So that's what you get. So you can ac actually access it almost immediately. It's just, it may seem weird because if you have a lot of stuff, you'll see it populate as you're actually in the drive. The other thing. Ahmed had a question. Uh, how do you know if you need more time? You actually get notification. You get an email notification that says, and I'll show you that one as well. It says your content is on the way and then your content has arrived. So I'll show you those right away here. Uh, a lot of students ask for their email contact list. Does that go with their email or how does that work? Uh, that uh, one, I don't believe so. No, that one I think you have to use the download method. And then what it does is it actually exports a uh, CSV for you so you can actually import it into what other mail client you use, whether it's like Thunderbird for Firefox, Microsoft Outlook, Office 365, or any, I think he, it even gives you the uh, option to load it into your, I think iPhone calls it iCals or something like that. So yeah, that's why it's a CSV. Yeah, it's a much quicker way. I, I would actually say is that's a quicker way to get it than going through this takeout um, process here as well. So yeah, um, hopefully you're seeing my screen again here. This is the email that I got. So I got one right away that said your content is on the way. You started a copy and transfer on June 4th from virtual teacher to virtual student. It may take up to a week. And then three minutes later, I got one, your content has arrived. So if you see on my email, there's actually two new categories that have been created. One based on the date. So the moved date, that gives me all of the emails. If I jump into here that were moved on that date, and another one, and these are just tags, they're just labels. If you see over here, the, the uh, gray label, one says inbox, one says virtual teacher. If we expanded that a little bit bigger, we'd also see the one that says moved. Uh, and there's my virtual teacher one. Again, they're gonna be the exact same. Both of them have 18 in there. They're just labels that are attached to it. They're also in my inbox. So if I did archive it or remove them out of my inbox, they would still be in these labels. So we could still go back and see them. If I look at my drive, it's also transferred these ones. Here's a folder that Mike was talking about. Uh, the folder is virtual teacher with the date and any of the files that were inside of there that this guy had the ownership of are now going to be in uh, a copy of them will be made over here. So there's a bunch of different ones. We don't have much in here. There's probably a whole bunch in this classroom because I use this all the time for my classrooms. But Essentially, uh, it, it brought all those over and then we're all done. We're all good to go. So, yeah. So let's take a look at the other one then. The other one is just takeout.google.com. There's no transfer in this one. All right, so what you need to do in this case or your students need to do is they need to go through each of the different Google products that they have data in and they need to select whether they want that removed or not and what format they want it in. So probably are not doing much with Android device. Um, if we see here Alton Arts and Culture, there are multiple formats we can pull it out. If you click on that, it's going to give you the different formats that you can pull it out in. So we have our favorites are coming out in HTML. We can't change that. And the galleries that we had highlighted in there were CSVs. Let's roll down to uh, calendar. It will allow us to select which calendars we want. So this guy only has one, but if we had multiple calendars for this individual, if they were in uh, some Google classrooms and I hadn't deleted those calendars yet, we could bring those out with us. Um, and then we can choose the format that we want that in. So iCal is one that's common. And uh, so I guess that's the only one for this guy. Let's come down to, I know that when we get down into our drive, here's our advanced settings. And so now we see for our drive, our advanced settings include named and uploaded versions. And here we go. We can save it as docx or PDF 
our drawings we can export as different image files or PDFs and so on and so on, right? We can just keep going down to all of these and really be specific on the format that we want to export and the or the uh, the file type that we want to. Goes all the way down if you got your Google Fit stuff in there, um, all the way down, lots of different things. Jump to next step. And it's going to now ask you for some of the specifics on this. So this one is much more in depth. Um, how often do you want to export? So if we want to have exports running more than once, if this is a one and done, brilliant. If we want to run it every few months, uh, we can do uh, six exports a year here. So Mike, did you want to say something on that? Yeah, well, on this one, uh, they're not going to have the option to do it like every six months or whatever, because it's blocked out. Uh, if can you right, yeah, can you back up one? Because uh, I know Absolutely. there was a question about the uh, contacts, and I just want to see what formats there are for the contacts in case I need to. Oh, so it, hang v on, card. yeah, it puts it in the V card. Can you change? Course, okay, yes, there we yeah. go. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, most people like I'm going to tell you right now the easiest format to work with is going to be CSV format. The only time you want to keep V cards is if you actually want to import it into a uh, Android. I think iPhone does take V cards, but they get a little ugly. Um, but for most desktop applications, if you're moving your contacts over, it'll take the CSV file. And then usually from there, if your phone's tied to the account, it'll just automatically import it from that. So that's a good note on the six months thing, even though students could set it to be six months or you could set it to be, uh, or sorry, six times a year, once every two months, because you've been moved out of that OU, the OU that has takeout available to you, it wouldn't be available. So it would run the first time. And then after that, it would error out. Um, the other thing is all of this stuff you're seeing, you, your students should only see stuff that they have access to and services that they have turned on. So they probably are not going to see Google Voice and uh, and some of these other ones. So just as something to be aware. We'll set that to once. Now we start to select our file type. It's going to compress these files. So I would suggest zip is a common one. And then it's going to ask us how big of a zip file do we want? So it will do multiple files. Uh, but again, the students will have to download them locally. So they probably don't want to set a 50 gig file because it'll be all in one. But when they go to download that 50 gig, they're going to blow through their data cap. And if they're doing it on their phone or, or their storage, it's going to go through really quickly. So, uh, and then we just hit create export and it will export. It'll start working in the background and it will send you an email when your export is ready to download. So if it's, I think we just have a really quick one here. Um, it shouldn't take too long at all for this guy. And then we can go in and create another one. So you could export when this is open, you could export, uh, you know, let's say your documents in one export, you could then go in and export your contacts and emails in another one and have a bunch of different ones all export if you wanted while it's open. I'm going to pop up to our uh, mail here. And we should see a email because there wasn't much value in there. So your data is ready to download. If we finish your copy, you can download your data until June 11th. Uh, I believe that the data is there, right, Mike? I think that even though they're out of that takeout OU, the minute that export has been created, they can still get to it, correct? He's doing some Googling on his end. Yeah, uh, no, I was in a different window. Um, yeah, I believe even if it's turned off, I'd have to turn it back on so they can get to it. But yeah, I believe it okay. is there. Okay. And there we go. Just download it. It's all good. It's all there. So oh, don't really need that one. So. Um, and that's essentially it. That's a tool that's available to use. Uh, you go through Mike to get that. We gave you the steps. We gave you the documentation on how to do that. Uh, is there any questions that are coming out of this that we can answer? I know Marie's got a vested interest in this one. So congratulations, ma'am. Jason, I have a question. Yes, Simon. Yeah, I, I didn't want to type this one because this one is a long one. But uh, in, in essence, it's regarding uh, report cards. 
uh, I was aware of this uh, transfer, but uh, it was limited. So now I know why it's limited. Um, so with regards to report cards, since we switched online, uh, we were asked to convert all our report cards into PDFs. Now, the last time I did it, it was a pain in the butt because I had to do each file, uh, you know, in the individually. I know there are ways to do it, but then it compromises uh, the uh, security of the file. So I didn't want to do it that way. Um, but I wanted to ask if we wanted to select, let's say I have a folder that has the report cards in it and they're all in the Google format. Can I select just that, um, you know, report card folder and convert it into PDF so that it downloads all at once rather than me having to go in every single file and changing that into a PDF? So what you're saying, if I hear you right, is you want to use this takeout and you want to uh, just go down to your drive and hmm, choose specific data. Um, I believe that we can. I'm just taking a look here. Well, you can actually download the entire folder. It just creates a zip. Yeah, but what I'm wondering, and I think what Amada is asking is, yeah, so we'll create a new folder in here. And we're going to call that folder Jason's test folder. And you guys are just seeing my face, so I'll show you what I'm doing here. <laughs> um, and so what I did is I created this Jason's test folder uh, inside, of, inside of my virtual teacher drive. And now when I go to my takeout, I'm going to cancel this. Under Drive, I deselected everything. So up here, everything is selected by default. I'm going to deselect all. I'm going to come down to Drive and go All dra Drive Data. We're going to uncheck that one. And it might not have just synced up yet, but I do see here's my Classroom folder and my Textbooks folder. I believe that it just is going to take a minute uh, to sync that data up. Maybe I, I started it too soon or something like that. But we should see the other ones underneath here. So you should be able to grab that folder that you want and export it as a PDF and then save it there. So uh, that is something that I will stay on here after and test out for you to make okay. sure that works. But I think that, that that may potentially work for you where it allows you to export it all at once. So yeah. Yeah, I did, I did my homework and I uh, um, figured out how to do it. So it is doable, but on our end, because there's the uh, you know restriction, um, I figured I would ask you, and this is why this is the main reason actually I wanted to attend this uh, webinar because in our school uh, there are a lot of teachers that are not very um, uh, tech savvy. So when it came to exporting the PDFs, it was a pain in the butt to try to explain it to teachers, and then you know having to do it for 24 students uh, wouldn't be fun. <laughs> so those no. that have more than one uh, class, they have a lot more to do. Yep, no, I, no, I totally appreciate it. So this might work. Uh, there's going to be, like you said, there's always going to be some issues surrounding it, and there's always a bit of troubleshooting, but this one might work for you for sure. So, Yeah, it would be a lifesaver, <laughs> especially if we stick with well, this online uh, you know, uh, learning method, uh, making report cards and any type of other reports. We don't have to convert every file individually. It would be much appreciated. <laughs> Well, we'll have to we'll have to see. I mean, we're not, I'm not going to say it's going to be a lifesaver yet until we have uh, an actual proof of concept. But right now, the theory is very good, so I think uh, it doesn't hurt to can, try. I'm maybe I'm step up. Exactly. To all those PDFs. It doesn't hurt to try. Uh, yeah. So there's there's another one that Mike brought up. We looked at the two different systems. One was a uh, transfer. Of files and the other one was a, a download of files so be aware that with the transfer of files if you have a personal Gmail or Google account you are limited to 15 gigabytes of space above 15 gigs uh, you have to pay for additional space so if you have a massive um, palace or Google Drive that you want to move all of it over um, especially if it's a lot of non-Google um, file types. Google file types, I believe, are still free. I don't think they count towards your cap. But the non-Google file types, if you have a bunch of video files or image files or something like that, and it exceeds that 15 gigs, it won't, uh, it won't bring it all over for you. So you will need to then download it 
to a local uh, storage and then move it off. So it shouldn't when you try to grab your Google Drive, it shouldn't grab those shared drives as well, right? Just your own my drive. That's correct. Yeah. Other questions maybe you have about this. If not, I will, uh, I mean, I'll stick around obviously to answer some of these questions and, and make sure if anybody wants to ask any questions specifically, I think Mike can uh, stick around. He probably will uh, tune us out for a bit and but keep the audio on. Um, but uh, thanks again uh, for this one. Uh, I think that next week is, is probably gonna be my last week of scheduled um, webinars. I, I believe we've kind of run our course and, and people may not be uh, that interested in, in too much more. That being said, if there is a topic of need or something that you're really interested in and you want, let me know uh, and, and we can schedule one all the way. We can keep going all the way to the end uh, if you want, or we can just connect uh, individually and just see what we can do on there. So, so thanks again, Mike. Thank you for your uh, expertise with this one. And uh, we'll stop the streaming and stop the recording.